Okay, uh, problem 3.19 is telling us to use equation 3.73, which is this equation right here, the relation between uh, the change in time of the expectation value of any observable with the commutator of h hat and q hat. Uh, and we're supposed to use this and show that for a wave packet that represents a free particle, therefore where the case where v is equal to zero, uh, the expectation value of x moves at constant velocity, and we're also told that this is the quantum analog to Newton's first law. So uh, immediately when I see this statement, what I'm assuming is that this problem wants me to get a result that is sort of in the same vibes as force equals mass times acceleration. And if you remember back in 3.18, we showed that the expectation value of, or the change in time of the expectation value of P was equal to negative dV by dx, right? This is from problem 3.18. And I can very easily relate d by dt of momentum into acceleration by just adding a second time derivative and including also a mass constant, right? So if I say, okay, if I start with the time derivative of the expectation value of x, right? This is equal to velocity. If I take a second derivative, d by d2 by dt squared of x. This is now going to be d by dt of velocity. If I then add a mass at the front, so m times d2 by dt squared, this is now going to equal mass times the expectation value of velocity, which is just momentum, so d by dt of p. Now we go up to problem 3.18's result and we say, okay, well this is just further equal to the negative of the expectation value derived with respect to x. So what this means is that, well, we just said that for a free particle, v is just equal to zero. So that means that this term right here is just zero. So that means that d2 by dt squared of the expectation value of x is equal to zero. Therefore, we integrate once, and the change with respect to time of the expectation value of x is equal to some constant. Therefore, uh, as said over here, the expectation value of x moves at constant velocity, which is exactly what we've shown with this. The d by dt of expectation value of x is constant. And let's move on to part b. Part b is asking us to do the same thing, but this time we're dealing with a potential that is equal to the uh, harmonic oscillator potential, one half m omega squared x squared, and we're said to uh, show that for this, uh, we're going to result in an expectation value of x that oscillates at the classical harmonic oscillator frequency. So uh, let's just immediately go back to sort of the relation we were working with before, which is that, you know, uh, m d2 x by dt squared is equal to the expectation value of negative dv by dx, because this is sort of the only relation we have right now that involves the potential. So if v is equal to 1 half m omega squared x squared, then dv by dx is going to equal m omega squared x, right? So if m d2 expectation value of x by dt squared is equal to, uh, expectation of negative m omega squared x. These two are constants, m and omega squared, they come out, the m cancels here, so d2 x by dt squared is equal to negative omega squared x, uh, or not x, expectation of value of x, I'm sorry. And, you know, this is literally just the differential equation for our standard harmonic oscillator, right? This is going to resolve to expectation of x is equal to a sine of omega x plus b cosine of omega x. As we've learned uh, multiple times since we've ran into sort of the simple harmonic oscillator as first introduced way back in classical mechanics, right? This is just a standard differential equation that we've been using all this time for that. So in this case, the oscillation of our system is quite literally just omega, which is the standard classical simple harmonic oscillator frequency. So with that, we're done with this problem. We can move on to the next one.